for the last year or so, I've used my M1 PowerBook to the right there a lot more than I thought I would initially. I've been using it to drive my tracks for live gigs, and I've been using it a lot in the studio because I have some plugins on there that I really like to use for working out tracks, especially for clients. And so, with so much increased work on the laptop, I found myself in the need of a digital mixer paired with a DAW controller. And so why not the Yamaha DM3, which is both of these things? And what I need the most in terms of transport controls are here in the lower right corner. Play, stop, forwards, backwards, and bank selects, etc. And that's essentially all I need to control my DAW in a working session. And also for any live work, perfect setup of buttons. And here is Cubase 11, and I have the DM3 going. I pair them together through USB, and this is how I use it. One thing right off the bat, all the different track names are reflected on the mixer itself, on the channel strip there. You can see all the names corresponds with what I have on the tracks in the Cubase session, and that goes automatically. The beats and bars and time seconds, etc., are also reflected on the DM3 coming directly from the DAW. So everything is synced up as such. There are no analog signals coming in at the back of the DM3 here. It's all coming from the DAW through the USB port. So moving the faders here is in reality me just playing with the levels in the DAW. I can also use the touch screen on the DM3 to control every parameter. And as you can see, the door controller works perfectly from those six buttons in the lower right corner here. You can scrub through the audio and shuffle through the audio if you want to. But who does that these days, really? Pressing that home button always takes us back to the main screen. I can still control the door with the transport controls. But from this window, I can access all the different parameters for a channel. Among them, EQ. You have lots of windows you can access to watch what's going on in the mixer. Inputs, outputs, send levels, effect levels, etc, etc, effects returns, among other things, which I will not go into in much detail here. And like on any uh, digital mixer with motorized faders, you use these to set send levels, effects levels, etc. And it's a great visual cue for seeing at a glance what's going on. And this is also one of the reasons I got this over the Personas Studio Live, because the motorized faders are a great help and aid in a live situation. And almost everything inside this mixer can be routed to anywhere else, really. All inputs can be sent to outputs. Very flexible, very powerful. It also has Dante if you, if you need that. And the power and flexibility of having the options to route pretty much anything to anywhere is really what makes this mixture perfect for me. And the reason I ditched my Persona Studio Live, that wasn't bad, but this is better. I also have two independent effects processors on board, and I look forward to checking out the Yamaha Symphonic chorus and the whole reverb among other things and I look forward to checking them out against my old DMP7 digital mixer from 1987. The integration between the computer and the DM3 is of course both ways so uh, changes I do in the door will be reflected on the DM3 itself. For example levels of the different channels. So with a 16x16 16 16 audio interface that the DM3 is it also has a two-track recorder and playback device from USB, which I really like as well. So everything coming in on the DM3 can be recorded as a two-track session going out. And this is exactly what I've been doing in this video. All the tracks coming from the door 
is being routed to the stereo output of the DM3 and recorded on the USB stick you see at the upper right corner there as a stereo mix. So this is actually now happening in real time. I've stopped the recording now and now I can rename it and give it a title, etc., like everything else, and pull the USB stick out of the DM3 and put it into my computer and offload that stereo track, which I will then import into my Premiere Pro and make this video as you're currently watching. Again, in a live situation, I can record a backup of my entire live gig onto this USB stick for playback later. It would of course be even better if I could record all the individual 16 channels as separate tracks on the USB stick, which this firmware currently do not offer. Regardless of that, I think this DM3 is a great piece of kit and I look forward to using it more in the studio and on live sessions. As always, I'm Espencroft. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.